welcome to TRT World. So we see climate models suggesting a possible return around the world to El Nino weather conditions. What exactly does that mean? What will that look like? Well, there's a very good chance that uh, global temperatures will increase somewhat this year because of El Nino. Uh, recent warming since the 1980s has been driven by El Ninos. I don't think emissions play any role at all. Over the last eight years, we've emitted 500 billion tons of emissions worth 14% of man-made CO2, and there's been no warming. Uh, what causes the warming is the El Nino. As far as we can tell, there's nothing we can do about that. El Nino is a natural phenomenon uh, caused either by uh, volcanic activity under the Pacific Ocean, possibly with some solar uh, contribution, but it's got nothing to do with emissions. So, can I just uh, stop, stop yeah. you there? Because that sounds so interesting uh, that you don't think what exactly has nothing to do with emissions, global warming or, or what exactly? Yeah, the warming. The, the emissions are not warming the planet. We've just had nine years or eight years, I'm sorry, of um, 500 billion tons of emissions with no warming. That's per, you know, U.S. government data. Uh, so obviously, you know, we are told that every emission warms the planet. That is clearly not the case. What we do know warms the planet are these El Ninos, and we've had a series of them since the 1980s. The most recent one was in, tw in 2015, which is the last time we saw warming. Now, the next time we see warming could be this year, and it's going to be caused by an El Nino. It's got nothing to do with emissions. OK, so tell us, um, if we do see El Nino uh, make a return this year, which will be the hardest hit areas? What will that mean for humans and animals? Well, it, it, it's hard to tell. I mean, we don't really, you know, it could be a major El Nino, which temperatures would go up a little bit. It's, it's really hard to predict, you know. Uh, keep in mind, last year, people were, you know, predicting this 1,200-year drought in California. Uh, they completely, you know, California and the western United States is totally out of drought uh, this year. No one predicted that. These things are hard to predict. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't predict the future. But what I can do is look in the past and see that emissions have not affected global temperature uh, for most of the last 10 years. But I don't have data on me right now, but surely there are lots of people that would... Uh disagree with that, that emissions don't uh, uh, impact uh, global warming? Uh, of course, because there's a whole movement that has been dedicated to spreading this myth uh, since the uh, early 1990s. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of inconvenient truth out there. You know, we, in your teaser to this, we saw about people complaining about, um, you know, ice in the Alps. Uh, 6,000 years ago, the Alps were ice, the Alps were ice free. You know, there are natural changes that go on uh, have gone out throughout the Earth's history, through the history of mankind, and we're pretending that everything that is happening now is new. And in fact, it's not new. The Earth has been as warm, if not warmer, before. Uh, we have these natural events. The, the weather is controlled by Mother Nature, not by emissions. Emissions are a very small part of the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere is four hundredths of a percent. The notion that that drives weather it's just without a, a basis in science. All right. Steve, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much indeed uh, for coming on. Steve Milloy, who is uh, from the uh, uh, Energy and Environment Legal Institute. Thank you so much. Thank you.